Welcome back to another episode of the Whiskey House Pub House. My name is Dylan. Today, we're going to be reviewing this box. No, actually, we're going to be talking about Little Book, Chapter 8, The Path Not Taken, right? Is it? Yeah, Path Not Taken. So this has actually been out for a bit, and um, I thought it was time for a review. So the the little book stuff is always I'm always hesitant on them. It has been a while since I picked one of these up, not because I don't like Jim Beam or I boycotted Jim Beam to an extent. Um, it's more so if I'm going to have a weird recipe or weird mash bill or something like that, usually the craft guys do it better. <laughs> At least sometimes I feel like that. Let me know in the comments. But the last one I got was actually the uh, 2021. I'm looking at it right now, the invitation. Um, I haven't been a fan of some of them. I think last year's I liked, but I did not pick up. But we're talking about this one, so what do we got? So this is a um, kind of, it's kind of a, a burai to an extent. So what we got in this, this is a 18 Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, high rye, 11 year Kentucky Straight Rye Whiskey, seven year Kentucky Straight Rye Malt Whiskey, a five year Kentucky Straight Rye Whiskey, KY Family Style Char 4, 5-Year Kentucky Straight Rye Whiskey, Pennsylvania Family Style Char 1, right? Is that Char 1? Yeah, Char 1. A 5-Year Kentucky Straight Rye Whiskey, Pennsylvania Pennsylvania Style, Pennsylvania Family Style Char 4, and a 4-Year-Old Straight Rye Whiskey. I will say the blending on these have typically been... Really well done. Let's pour this. Let it open up a little bit. No, I'm not using a Glen Cairn because I um, mine are all dirty. So I'm using this official bourbon trail bourbon. I can't see it. I gotta look into it. The official Kentucky Bourbon Trail drinking glass available only on Amazon. So we'll let that rest for a little bit. Uh, this is a hundred and twenty, no, fifty-nine point one percent alcohol, one hundred eighteen point two. Now these are recommended sale price at about one hundred sixty dollars. So for one hundred sixty dollars, they have to do better than Knob Creek single barrels, right? I'm only really getting a lot of alcohol burn, a little bit of eucalyptus or something. It does smell rye heavy as far as the Jim Beam profile. It smells rye heavy on the nose, which is surprising considering the mash bill seems like it's made up mostly of bourbon. I suppose not. It's undisclosed as far as what percentages are in it. The malted rye is was there a basil Hayden malted rye? Is that where that came in? Oh, I just got like a what is that? I'm trying to think of it. It's a condiment I'm thinking of. It smells like a ketchup mayo. What's that dressing that's like pickles? It's a green. Sometimes we put it in hot dogs. It smells like that mixed it with mayo. That was just a terrifying smell. And then he stuck a Sharpie in it. All right, well, let's see if the palate is uh, hopefully better and redeems the nose. 
I'm sure it will. I'm never a big nosing the bourbon kind of guy. Bourbon is meant to be nosed to just be a candle. Kind of tastes like I'm drinking a candle. Yeah, I mean, you can tell the rye is very forward and punchy on it. Um, the alcohol proof it is, is nice. It's not dominant. The flavor is what is in control, at least from what I can tell. It does have a little bit of a spearmint flavor to it. I'm not picking up like any intense oak from that 18 year percentage blend or whatever. Second sip. Man, I don't know. I remember liking this on that, the podcast we did. This is not anything great for me. It is spearmint, kind of toothpaste-y. It does have rye forward qualities to it, which is fine. I like rye. That's not the problem with it. It's just there's not a quality or a uniqueness that I can't get out of a $20 bottle. Not a $20 bottle, but a 40, 40 range uh, bottle of, you know, rye. $40 range bottle of rye. Um, I don't know. It's just like, what's been with the rise lately? I, ha I absolutely hated the uh, Heaven Hill Grain to Glass rye. I did not like that. This is giving me weird notes. It tastes like a $40 bottle of rye. A bad one. Like, there's way better good ones in that price range, but some sometimes you find a bad one. general sweetness general caramel i'm not finding maybe it's me i don't know i'm not finding complexity into it nuance it drinks like a four to five year cast strength rack that was done good a good four to six year cast strength rack around that 40 to 50 dollar range like a pikesville I know that's not cast strength, but you get my point. Um, and I don't know. And this has been open for a bit. What do they got for flavor notes? Let's see. Color is deep copper with golden undertones. Yeah, okay. Thank you for that. Helps basically no one. Uh, aroma, complex blend of butterscotch, fresh dill. I did say pickle, at least. And toasted rye bread. These are the tasting notes of a $40 rye. <laughs> Taste. Floral notes, intermittent mingled with sweet apricot and heavy oak. I didn't, I don't, I'm not getting oak on this. Heavy oak? I just did a review of the Two Soul Spirits, Jake Harbor. Those are eight years old. I know they're using regular size barrels and that had oak. This 18 year Kentucky bourbon and the 11 and the seven and the fives and the four, I'm not getting that much oak off of it. Maybe it's me. There's no flaws with it as far as the juice inside the bottle. The only flaws that come with it are the ones administered by the suggested retail pricing. The blend is done good. I just don't think it reflects the pricing based off the flavor. I'm still not getting the oak. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know what to say about this. I am disappointed once again by a little book release. 
Last year's was better. I liked last year's. Final thoughts on this. No. Especially when you can go out and get Single Barrel Picks Arrive from Nile Creek, the nine year old 100 proof for $40. You get the seven year rye. You can get the, there's a 10 year rye now. There's, there's so many other options. This just feels in, this feels phoned in and just seems like a placeholder just so you can collect this year's bottle. Not a placeholder, but feels phoned in. And I didn't want it to be. But if this is something that you like, I understand why. I just, it's its not my profile. And I respect that. Don't let me ruin it for you. And I don't think you will. Because you probably won't take much of what I say seriously. I just, I still like to rant at the camera. So, and you're still watching. So, obviously you think of something. Well, if you got any value out of this, please like, subscribe, write me a comment. If you have a bottle that you would like me to review and it's decently obtainable, I will do my best and I will try to find that bottle. Maybe I have it already, but let me know if there was a bottle that you'd like to see me review. Uh, otherwise, if you have any other shit, if you have any other suggestions, comments, um, leave them below. But that's going to do it for this episode of the Whiskey House Pub House. My name's Dylan, and we'll see you next time.